Welcome to The Skill, that program that explains happenings in the justice sector of Nigeria. I remain yours on the program, Femi Okeowo. We have said so much about the state of our correctional centers and we also have highlighted steps being taken to make things better in that segment of the justice sector. Of course, one of them is the change of name, which is expected to impact on the activities in the correctional centers. What we have not done so much is talk about juvenile justice. But the Presidential Committee for the Reform and the Congestion of Correctional Centers has focused now on the juvenile justice sector of uh, the correctional processes. And that is why in its visit to correctional centers, it is focusing more now on the remand homes. And unfortunately, Nigeria has a dirt of remand homes. But the little that we have, how are they being managed? Recently, the Presidential Committee for the Reform and the Congestion of Correctional Centers visited yet another juvenile center, this time in Ilori, and the visit was very revealing. That is what we are going to start the scale with in this edition. Nigeria has only three juvenile remand homes owned by the federal government. One in Kaduna, another in Abeokuta, and then Ilori. Only Lagos is known to have established any similar facility. Inadequate as these are to cater for Nigeria's rising juvenile crime rate, the presidential committee is more disturbed by the misuse of the federal government-owned centers by the parents and correctional officers who have turned the centers into what the chairman described as dumping ground for children who they claim are beyond parental control. But far more than that, the presidential committee is angry that the juvenile correctional officials have completely breached the laws which allow only juveniles within 16 to 21 years of age to be kept in the centers and through valid court orders. Thank you conviction on them without arraignment. This is absolutely outside the context of rule of law. The visit also revealed that although the Gamma Center in Ilori is named a training institute, not much is going on in terms of instilling skills and knowledge. As a result of all these, but particularly because nearly all the inmates did not fulfill the legal conditions for remand, about 65% of them were released after strenuous screening by a technical committee which had the UNODC and UNICEF as members. It is not sufficient just discharging these inmates. There is a painstaking process of contacting the parents who must come and take possession of the students as a measure of safety. Imagine a 38-year-old graduate being kept in the facility along with these children. 
Abdul Wasil, you are 38 years old, you said. Yes, sir, I am 38 years old. And uh, since when were you brought to this institution? I was brought to this institution precisely on the 19th of August 2021. You say you are a graduate and that you have done your NYC. What did you study in university? I graduated from Malikma University in 2014 and I studied economics. Since 2014, what have you been doing? Yeah, I've done various jobs. I've been a property manager, I've been a pro uh, project manager, and I've also driven for Textify, Bolt, and Uber in Lagos State. So what is it that brought you to this place? Well, um, I was brought here basically because of my addiction to alcohol, but I was not brought here on that basis. I was actually brought here as an antecedent to a prior uh, misunderstanding between my dad and I. Because sometime in late um, July, as I said, I was, I'm was i a property manager, so uh, we have a property uh, project we are developing at um, around Kwa State University in Manite. So I happen to be the project and site manager at that place. So I was approached by one of uh, the plumbers at the site that he needed some wood, to be precise, to develop his house that he was building around the same area and requested I sold some used materials to him. So I agreed and sold it to him at the price of 12,000 naira. And that same day, my dad, on his arrival to the, to the site, was informed that the wood, some of the woods were sold. And when he inquired, he was informed that I was the one that sold them. So he immediately contacted the Malete police station to detain me for stealing. And I tried to explain to him that I actually did not steal and I did not know they were still to be used. That they were supposed to be, I believe they were supposed to be the ones we were no longer using. And I only did it to help the plumber that also works for us at the site. So after much plea and pleading and persuasion, he still refused. So he insisted I be taken to court for that offence. And I was actually taken to court on the 29th of July. I was remanded in um, Okekura prison for a period of 14 days for the next adjournment. So on the date of the next adjournment, which was on the 8th or, or the 12th of August, so he agreed to release me and I was released and he withdrew the case. Only six days later to be rearrested and I still try to inquire why I was being arrested, that I have committed no crime this time around. And he was like, he was not happy with my drinking habits and what not, and he was advised by some people that there was a facility he could take me to that could actually stop me drinking. And I explained more to him that why doesn't he let us use the orthodox method we've been using, which was the re rehabilitation process at a proper rehab facility. But I believed he was convinced that here was a better solution to the problem at hand then. So on the 19th of August, I found myself brought here and I was persuaded to say things I was not supposed to say, like lying about my age, claiming I was 22 and being threatened to be taken to prison if I did not cooperate. So I found myself here. Now that you have been discharged, knowing the true situation of things, you also know that you are uh, into drugs. What do you intend to do now that you have been told to go home? What new steps, new life do you intend to lead? Firstly, my being brought here would not change the kind of relationship I have with my parents because I know they always want the best for me. That's why they want me to be where I would, a controlled environment such as this place. But notwithstanding, I am a man of 38 years and above and I think, thank God and with the help of my parents, I have a um, degree that I can actually tend and work with. So I think I would rather, at this stage, try to take my destiny into my own hands and seek employment where I can find it and pray to God to guide me through in life. Do you, what do you intend to do about your addiction? Well, like the doctor said, addiction is a lifelong problem and it has to be dealt with precisely as such. So primarily, I still need to stay focused on my religious um, commitments by praying and staying clear of the alcohol, like I know because it's a major problem and it's a sin in the sight of God. So I have to be very religious about it and pray always and not um, most importantly, my determination 
to leave it completely and let it not be the destruct or the cause of destruction of my life by staying completely away from it and focusing on my life. I wish you the best, Abdul Wasil. Thank you very much, sir. All the parents' claims of stubbornness, truancy, and rascality are not known to the law. Justice Ishak Bello says the law has defined acts that should qualify juveniles for remand. Parents who want to abscond from their responsibilities of parenthood have found this place an avenue and safe haven for bringing their own children and dumping them. You see, there are two classifications or three. There is the category which we found in Lagos branded as beyond parental control. And here there is the other category where that is just a case of dumping by the parents, so no associated complaint whatsoever. Initially we thought it was a magistrate they pinned down to achieve this in one of the states of the Federation because most of the orders came from that approach. But from the revelation of the officer within the Bosel Institute, it became obvious that it was just a concocted document. They are concocted documents. So meaning there is absolutely no any legal basis for their detention here. The procedure not having complied with and not associated with any visible crime. And we are happy some of their parents have come here, registered their pledge uh, about what we have done. And they have taken them away even while we are here. Some are overgrown for being here. By the law establishing Boston Institute, the entry point is 16 years to 21 years. We found people that are 40 something here, 28, 29, name them. A lot of them, they ought not to be here. And what the law wanted to insulate the children by saying it is an institute meant for them is being really practicalized on them, on natural offenses in terms of sodomy by the aged that have been brought here. That is why the young ones are not meant to be in the adult incarceration centers, to insulate them from that. Now you are bringing the adults where the juveniles are being detained, and then the very thing that is being feared is being perpetrated on them. It is quite a, it is counterproductive. Those parents that come here and dump their children thinking that, oh, they are away from responsibility, they are on the, at the end of the day creating more problems for themselves. My Lord, your visit to this place, your eye-opening visit to this place, now makes your visit to Kaduna and Abekuta more compelling. Well, definitely. Well, for Abekuta, we, we were able to send a technical committee that uh, sieved out those that were deserving attention and via Zoom, we were able to effect a necessary decision and action. Uh, except for Kaduna, which is one of the three Boston Institute in the country who will plant time, appropriate time to visit that because what we have seen here is quite disturbing. A lot of us here yesterday when we left we couldn't sleep in good time because it's quite touching. But it was not just gloom alone during the visit. Two students who passed their wax exam while in the center were also released and granted scholarships. As has become part of the tradition of the presidential committee, books that can build the inmates were presented from the office of the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Apart from the fact that we need more centers, just three in Nigeria is not enough to cater for the rising speed of uh, youth crime now, uh, but uh, the ones that we have must comply with the rules. And we have just shown you some of the inadequacies, hoping that they will be addressed. The FCT High Court now has a new chief judge. He is Justice Husseini Yusuf Baba, who was sworn in by the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Now, 
the court can settle down and uh, confront its challenges as we edge towards an electionary period. Uh, so many cases uh, have been brought to the FCT and you know that uh, one of the areas of contention is where people go forum shopping or uh, filing cases out of jurisdiction. Uh, the FCT High Court will have to deal with that squarely. Uh, that, these are some of the areas that the Chief Judge Justice of Nigeria uh, pointed out uh, during the swelling in of the new Chief Judge of the FCT. Let us visit the Supreme Court where the swelling in was done. Justice Hussein Baba Yusuf is the second chief judge to be sworn in to preside over the affairs of the FCT High Court this year alone. The previous one, Justice Salisu Garuba, had a short tenure and with his appointment as the administrator of the National Judicial Institute paved way for this appointment, which will now lead the FCT High Court into the critical season of 2022 and 2023. Chief Justice of Nigeria therefore used the occasion of his swearing in to admonish him in his capacity as a head of court and other judicial officers to be conscious of politicians and lawyers who might want to pursue personal ambition at the expense of the sanctity of the law. The legal profession should indeed take the lead in all human affairs. However, the lead is at a price. We cannot take the lead when our courts issue expert orders recklessly. We cannot take the lead <clears throat> when many litigants with support of their counsel engage in forum shopping. We cannot take the lead when counsel file a case before a court that they know lacks jurisdiction. Then the judge proceeds to hear the case. We cannot take the lead when counsel files frivolous cases in our courts just for nuisance value or to buy time. Administration of justice is the bedrock of uh, not only democratic or civilized societies, but it also extends beyond the borders of civilized nations. No society can afford to discard administration of justice. There's no regime in any country that can operate without a judiciary. No matter how primitive a society is, it must have its own mechanism for resolution of its disputes. Otherwise, that society will drift into anarchy, self-destruction, and the extinction. We must not only do self-assessment, we also need self-cleansing. All hands, therefore, must be on deck from both the bar and the bench to read the legal profession of bad acts. Justice Husseini Baba Yusuf promised that the FCT High Court will strive to live above board. You know that those before me did so well. I intend to improve on what they have done. We need to expand this court. We need to you know, open new jurisdictions. We need to have more judges. We need to improve on our facilities so we can deliver to the public. Um, the, what agitates the mind of the public now is um, you know, good case management. So we're going to ensure that we have easier way of dispensing justice. We also need to probably enforce some form of discipline because that is um, at the, the bedrock of any successful um, organization. People must know what to do, what not to do. So we're going to make sure that all this um, happen and um, um, we, we, will, we will ensure that at the end of the day, people who come here to ask for our services are happy. 
that is um, the thing. The Chief Justice of Nigeria yeah. said the yeah. FCT High Court is not just another state court. Well. It, it is yeah. a federal court, so Very to well. say. And with elections mm -hmm. approaching, he also yeah. talked about mm -hmm. the abuse mm -hmm. of court processes. Well. These are some mm -hmm. of the areas I'm sure that agitate your mind. Very well. You know that even before today, I've had meetings with my law, the CJN, and we discussed this extensively. You will discover that um, 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 ex parte injunctions that were given recently never emanate, did not emanate from this place. The reason is that we have told our people the right thing to do. Once you do not have jurisdiction, I mean, it will be bad to go get involved because that is what gives you the virus, to do whatever you need to do. So if you go and begin to dabble into cases that do not consign us, here, for example, we have a lot of cases. So you don't need to take cases that do not consign us to be able to have something to do. Now, training and rethinking is an ongoing process. So we will continue to engage our judges to ensure that they do the correct thing. Um, um, we have a good role to play, a big one, um, in the election process. Uh, we will ensure that our people do not be a catalyst for confusion. They do not be a catalyst for, for disorderliness and all the rest of them. So um, we're taking on our people and they understand what to do. So I expect that um, come 2023 or in the build up to it, we'll do well in a way that uh, we do not have conflicting decisions. You know, I mean, for example, now when there are cases that are fairly related, I give them to one judge mm. so that in dealing with one, yeah. after dealing with one, he has that in his mind when dealing with the second one so that what he does in A does not conflict with what he does with B. Now let's quickly take some gists from the courts as Olabo de Arewa gives us happenings around us in the courts. A Lagos State High Court sitting in Ikuyi has restrained commercial banks in the country from releasing funds totaling 11.7 billion naira to a Nigerian couple, Bamishi and Elizabeth Ajetumobi, who fled the country after duping investors of over 22 billion naira through a Ponzi scheme. Justice Toyin Oyekon Abdullahi granted an order of Maiva injunction freezing the assets of the couple. The court also granted an order restraining them from accessing the funds pending the termination of the suit filed against them by some aggrieved Nigerians who invested heavily in their savings scheme. A Mariva injunction is known as a court order to prevent the defendant from selling the assets or withdrawing the money while legal proceedings are on. Meanwhile, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission has arraigned the former chairman of the Special Presidential Investigation Panel for the recovery of public property, Obono Oblak, over allegations of certificate forgery. The commission in a two-count charge filed at the Judge Judicial Division of the High Court of Plateau State alleged that the defendant presented a fake result with a credit pass in English literature to the investor judge with which he secured admission to study law. The charge filed before Justice Christy Dabo alleged that while Obono Oblak did not sit for the GC in English literature in 1982, he presented the result of the same GC to the University of Jaws in 1985. Contrary to Section 366 of the Penal Code of Plateau State, So much on the scale today, we certainly will be bringing up issues that have been taking place in the justice sector of Nigeria as a way of helping you to understand the law and uh, know how to brace up to the issues that concern your human rights.
Thank you for being part of today's edition, and we shall be seeing you again in due course. Thank you.